Praise the Lord. What a blessing it is to be able to share the Word of God with you today. Uh, I have a very important subject to discuss, and as I'm getting ready to do it, we want first uh, to pray so that the Holy Spirit will give us direction. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity to share your word. We thank you, God, that you are real in our lives. We thank you that uh, you are an awesome God to serve. Holy Spirit, we ask in the name of Jesus that you minister to us, minister to me and through me so that I can share your word tonight, so that I can uh, be a help to someone who's listening. We give you the praise always in the name of Jesus the Christ. Subject tonight is pride. A very important lesson. Why is it that you and I both are Christians, children of God, both heavenly bound, and yet we cannot get along? Why can we not, without hypocrisy, truly enjoy the simple company of each other as brothers and sisters? The diagnosis is pride. That is too much negative pride. A prideful person is defined in the negative way as one that has an unduly high opinion of oneself. It is one who is arrogant and one who seems haughty or conceited or snooty. Pride also has a positive side. When a person has dignity and self-respect, that is good pride. And the negative, pride is a short five-letter word, yet when it is placed into action, it destroys everything in its path. It destroys everything in its path. Pride will destroy homes. Pride will destroy relationships. Pride will destroy love for others. Pride will destroy nations. Pride is simply a tool of the devil. It is an abomination to God. No one is immune to this tool of the devil. No one is immune to being used by the enemy with pride. So each person must look within himself or herself and keep this emotion under control because pride will cause people to speak when they should not act when it is inappropriate and hurt others who are dear to them. Let us look at a few verses to see what the scripture says in reference to being prideful. Proverbs 16, verse 18 from the Amplified Bible says, Pride goes before destruction, and a haughty or stuck-up spirit before a fall. Person doesn't just fall, usually pride precedes the falling. First Corinthians chapter 21, verse 7. It says, Now God was displeased with this act of arrogance and pride, and he struck Israel. Second Chronicles 17, verse 6. Still, the Amplified Bible, it says, His heart was encouraged, and he took great pride in the ways of the Lord. Moreover, he again removed the high places of pagan worship and the Asherim from Judah. Psalms 31, verse 18. It says, Let the lying lips be mute which speaks 
insolently and arrogantly against the consistently righteous with pride and contempt. Last one for now. Psalms 59 verse 17, it says, For the sin of the mouths and the words of their lips. Hallelujah. The sins of their mouths and the words of their lips, let them even be trapped in their pride and on account of the curses and lies which they tell. Pride came from the pit of hell. You cannot teach a prideful person even the most obvious lesson he or she needs to learn. Such individuals are too high up there in pride to take in instructions or to welcome sound advice. Obviously, pride lacks humility and as a result, it destroys. Pride displeases God unless it is in the positive or in the ways of the Lord. Pride causes lips to lie and speak insolently. Pride causes one to curse and to malign. Pride may even lead to assassination of others' character. Now, how is that? By spewing venoms on others. Proverbs 11 verse 2 says, When pride comes, boiling up with an arrogant attitude of self-importance, then comes dishonor, then comes shame. But with a humble or the teachable who have been chiseled by trials and who, are, who have learned to walk humbly with God, there is wisdom and soundness of mind. Pride can be blatant and obvious, and at the same time, pride can be subtle. Now, no one wants to be prideful, but sometimes we fall in the trap not paying attention. Pride makes a person feel as if he or she is so much more special than they ought. Pride makes a person look foolish to everyone else except to him or to herself. And pride is usually obvious to all others except to the owner of it. Usually there are four causes of pride. I will cite the verses that come with them, but I will not read them. The first cause of pride is power. You find that in Ezekiel 28 verse 2. The second cause is wisdom. Ezekiel 28 verses 3 and 4. The third cause is beauty. You find that from Ezekiel 28, verse 17. And the fourth one is riches. Well, from 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 10 and 11. Where do you fall in this category? As a child of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, where are you on the scale as far as pride is concerned. How can you tell whether or not you are a prideful person? How can you tell? Let us examine the following prayerfully. Let's look at it. When I'm, I'm going to a list, as I do, ask yourself, is that me or is that not me? Number one, if when you hear God's word, it says nothing to you, you are a prideful person. If when you hear God's word, it says nothing to you, you are prideful. Then if you look for vainglory, all 
always looking to be under the spotlight. You have to be seen. You have to be heard. You are prideful. If you have a haughty spirit and you think you are superior or better than any other, you are prideful. If you have little or no compassion for someone who faces difficulties in life, you are prideful. I'm not even giving you any examples. But I am thinking in this particular case, when so many of us, when we're driving, we get to the, to the street corner and you find somebody asking for money. If your first reaction is to say, go get a job, you are prideful. Better not say anything at all. Better drive through. If you have little or no compassion for somebody's hurting, somebody who's in a difficult situation, you are prideful. If you like to be seen and want to be in every picture in town, you are prideful. Hallelujah. If you are one who walks around with a cell phone, always selfing, you are prideful. If you have no respect for others, small or great, or you prefer and treat this person as a god and you treat another as insignificant, would you not say you are prideful? Yes, you are. By the way, you young people who are ashamed to be seen with a sibling, with your mom or dad for a shortcoming they may have because of a defect or for the negative result of an accident they may have had or for any other reason, you are prideful. You are prideful. Or perhaps it's because they cannot speak the language. You are prideful. Hallelujah. If your family, your dad or mom is giving you a ride to school, you're in high school, and you want them to stop at the corner, drop you, so you can walk the rest of the way, check it out. You are prideful. If you have a clear trace of selfishness in you, and you love to hug everything materialistic, and your language is mine, mine, and mine, you are prideful. You are prideful. You need to get on your knees and pray prayer of repentance. If you have, if you are easily agitated, you get upset for no apparent reason. You are prideful. Something to pray against. If you are a know-it-all and you don't like to be corrected, you are prideful. Because a true Christian should be corrected by anybody, small or great, young or old. If you have difficulties in saying, I'm sorry, Please forgive me and thank you. You are prideful. Those are things we learn from basic classes. You are prideful. Your pride will destroy you. If you deplore or detest when in need and people try to help you and cannot receive assistance of any kind from others, you are prideful. Yes, you are. You need to pray. Repent of it. If you cannot tolerate or accommodate others positively, you are prideful. Pride goes before destruction. Pride goes before a fall. If you have difficulties appreciating others, you are prideful. You ought to be able to appreciate others in spite of you are prideful if you don't. 
If you enjoy exaggerating stories, for whatever the reason, you are prideful. Some of us Christians, we are so prideful. We're giving testimonies in church. We have to make it sound so much bigger than it is. We have to even lie in it to make it sound more appealing. That's right. You are prideful. If you find it hard to connect to or minister to people you consider to be too lost to be saved, people that are of a lower base than you, you are prideful. Some of us, we don't want to even witness to certain groups of people. Pride. Pride will destroy you. Pride will destroy me if we allow it to grow in us. If you find it difficult to adapt to certain situations, such as wearing a mask to avoid Corona or COVID-19, that's right. That's right. Saying, who, me? Me? I don't have to do that. You are prideful. If you have to get a ticket from the police for not wearing a mask, when the law of the land says you need to wear it, or when the regulation or whatever says you have to do it, you still don't do it, you are prideful. Same as wearing a seatbelt. Seatbelt. Oh, you don't need that. Yes, you do. You are prideful. Yes. If you always want things your way, your decision must always be above the decision of others. You are prideful. Pride will destroy you. Repent of it. If you get angry because people do not take your counsel, you are prideful. You want every time, no matter what the situation is, what you say must be applied. No. That's right. Don't do it. If you do not like to give honor or credit when, de when others deserve it, you are prideful. Yes. Somebody graduated and got a special degree. You find it hard to say congratulations. You find it hard to say, oh, I thank God that you achieved this. Pride. Pride. You are prideful. I'm remembering when I was in the U.S. Marines. I joined the U.S. military when I was in the, in the second year of my college career. And uh, the drill structure that was over me had not completed uh, third grade. This guy did not like me for two reasons. I could hardly speak English. First reason. Second reason, because I went that far in school. Now, what do you call that? He was so prideful, but he was, because he was the one over me, drilling me, a drill instructor, he wanted to misuse me, make me work even harder, make my life miserable because he did not achieve what I achieved. Pride. If you are afraid of giving accolades to others for their achievements out of fear they will outshine you or your accomplishment, you are prideful. If you are wise in your own eyes alone, everybody can see the default that you have. They can see what's not right. But you, to you, you are the greatest. You are prideful. If you do not consider or accept counsel of others because of the person who offers it, you are prideful. Yes, you are prideful. Imagine a couple that's having difficulty. Perhaps
perhaps a couple of certain race having problem in their marriage and they have a skillful counselor of a different race that can help them but they would not go to that person because of what? That's right. Yes. If you don't have fear for God, you disobey the Holy Spirit's leading, you are prideful. If you don't have hope to see the kingdom of God, hallelujah, it is because you are prideful because the word tells you what to do and what to expect. Humans don't respond well to being put down. And pride gives others that feeling with its better than you implications. Humility has the opposite effect. If you have a lot of pride, you might even refuse to communicate with others, which is the worst relationship blunder a person can make. The word of God so much has so much to say against negative pride and being prideful. James chapter 4 verse 6. God is opposed to the proud and haughty, but continually gives the gift of grace to the humble who turn away from self-righteousness. I've said it many times. If you are a prideful person, you need to get on your knees and pray, repent of this, and then ask God to help you to do better. That's when you return, that's when you turn away from self-righteousness. Proverbs 21 verse 24 says, Proud, Haughty, scoffer are his names, who acts with overbearing and insolent pride. Proud, haughty, and scoffer. Galatians 6 verse 3. For if, if anyone thinks he is something special, when in fact he is nothing special except in his own eyes, he deceives himself. Deuteronomy 8, verses 17 to 18. It says, Otherwise, you may say in your heart, My power and the strength of my hand make me this wealth. But you shall remember, the word of God says, with profound respect, the Lord your God, for it is he who is giving you power to make wealth that he may confirm his covenant, which he swore solemnly promised to your fathers as it is this day. From Isaiah chapter 47, verse 10, the word says, For you, Babylon, have trusted and felt confident in your weakness. You have said, No one sees me. Your wisdom and your knowledge have led you astray. And you have said in your heart and mind, I am and there is no one beside me. That's what happened to Lucifer. Couple more, 1 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 2, it says, If anyone imagines that he knows and understands anything of divine matters, with our love, he has not yet known as he ought to know. Finally, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 3 and 4. If anyone teaches a different doctrine and does not agree with the sound word of our Lord Jesus Christ and with the doctrine and teaching which is in agreement with godliness, personal integrity, uprightness, and upright behavior, he is conceited and woefully ignorant, understanding nothing. He has a morbid interest in controversial questions and disputes about words, which 
produces envy, quarrels, verbal abuse, evil suspicion. Some of us Christians, we are hung up on semantics. We are hung up and we fight over these kind of things when it has nothing to do with true doctrine. It has nothing to do with salvation. But yes, we're tearing each other apart. That is pride. My brother, my sister, I advise you to get on your knees in all sincerity. Get on your knees and ask God to help you get rid of this negative pride. Ask him to help you to do better henceforth, to be a blessing to others. Let's pray. Father, we trust your word came across. Holy Spirit, we pray that you engrave it in our hearts and in our minds that we may do better avoiding being prideful. Help we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.